Hi folks, it is time for our weekly overview. And this week, we have really only one aspect, which is that on August the 7th, three days from now, Mercury retrograde conjuncts Venus in Virgo. Today, August the 4th of 2024, as I record this, we've had the new moon in Leo earlier today, for me, Pacific time, we've had Venus move into the sign of Virgo, and we have Mercury stationary and going retrograde today on August the 4th. I've done videos on Mercury retrograde. I've done videos on a long-term arc of where we are at between now and the end of the first week of June of 2025. I've done... Uh, a monthly overview for August, so all of those can be resources uh, to ground yourself with regard to where we are at from an overall picture currently. This, of course, is a weekly overview, and I just said that so that I don't end up repeating everything I said in those videos. Um, the other thing worth mentioning, of course, is that we are both under the sort of overarching influence of the April 9th Aries solar eclipse that was conjunct Chiron, but we're also starting to feel since the week before and after July the 7th, the pull towards the September 17th lunar eclipse in Pisces. We've been having eclipses on the Aries Libra axis since April the 19th of 2023, and we are just starting up a new set of eclipses uh, with the North Node eclipses in Pisces and the South Node in Virgo, with the first of these eclipses falling on September the 17th of 2024. The Aries Libra eclipses exercise their influence till the end of the first week of June of 2025, but now the Pisces Virgo eclipses also, uh, it's a bit of a relay race handoff between, let's say, um, the week before and after July the 17th of 2024 and the week before and after uh, June the 7th, 2025. Uh, both sets of eclipses will, will, will create this, will create a simultaneous pull. But the first of the eclipses that we're looking towards is the September 17th eclipse. And so there's a video on the new set of eclipses as well. As in all these videos being mentioned is to ground you with regard to where we're at. But coming back to this week, new moon in Leo today, Venus moving from Leo to Virgo today, Mercury retrograde at four degrees of Virgo today. On Wednesday, the 7th of August, Pacific time. Yep, I'm not crazy. It is Wednesday the 7th of August, Pacific time, Venus in Virgo and Mercury retrograde will meet up. Now, there's a bigger arc we need to look at as we head towards the next new moon. A new moon occurs and happens today, and it creates a 28-day month, the word month being derived from, from moon, as many of you who watch my channel know. I keep saying it over and over again. Um... It's the month of Leo. We have a new moon in Leo. But as I have mentioned in more recent videos, whatever opportunities or developments this new moon is likely to bring is going to reach finality and closure after Mercury goes direct as we head towards September. And then from September to the end of the first week of June is a kind of birth canal that we enter. So we are now very much in this place of pausing and letting Mercury retrograde start the process of informing us about what has been in our blind spot and what we need a reality check on. Now, Mercury retrograde also famously creates all sorts of mayhem. So some of those logistical mayhem, technology breakdowns, uh, delays, confusion. Um, I actually, I don't even wanna go into kind of the surface stuff that Mercury retrograde can do that can create a great deal of inconvenience logistically, but it's short term and a short lived. Uh, the larger purpose for Mercury retrograde after Mercury and the personal planets have been moving forward in May, June, July is that in August it decides to reverse because it feels like there is uh, the, our, our minds 
our brains, what we know for sure, needs to catch up. Um, uh, there are details that need to be incorporated. Uh, there are facts that need to be factored in before we start to move forward again after Mercury goes direct on August the 28th. Again, these are all themes that have been developed more extensively in more previous videos. I don't think it would be the end of the world if we had a weekly overview that wasn't too long, if I can actually get to it. There is, however, an arc that needs to be mentioned between today's August 4th new moon and the full moon that's going to occur 14 days from now on August the 18th. This week, I was going to say, this week is relatively benign, but is it? Um, we are, after all, we did have the full moon, not even, well, at this point in time, it's a little over 12 hours ago, based on when I'm recording this. Um, but the moon is still dark. But fortunately, the new moon has occurred. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the last 48 hours felt and particularly 24 to 48 hours before a new moon felt particularly kind of bleak and depressed and worrisome and anxiety ridden a little bit and just kind of flat and not much is happening and when action is tried to be taken this particular day of mercury retrograde at least so far august the 4th i'm going to wait till august the 5th has been a little bit calmer for me than the last start of Mercury retrograde, which I've mentioned before and told you guys about, about sort of going somewhere and the train schedules just being bananas and all that kind of stuff. This time I kind of, as consciously as I could, I tried to maintain uh, kind of just, uh, 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 I just kind of to be as much off the radar as possible for where Mercury could get me. But it didn't mean that, you know, for example, yesterday I was catching up on some astrology administration and when I was trying to send some recordings out or do some accounting and all that kind of stuff, it didn't mean that I didn't have my Mercury retrograde moments, but they were relatively benign, famous last words. I am keeping an eye out for, this is something you could potentially do, um, people who have reached out to me, people who are trying to reach out to me yesterday, day before, today, tomorrow, day after, what is coming up in communication? And very often with Mercury retrograde, things that come up, conversations that begin when Mercury retrograde starts, um, often you might find that as Mercury is going direct on August the 28th, um, those conversations resurrect themselves as well. And, and conversations can continue during August to head to August 17th, 18th, August 17th, is when a retrograde Mercury is gonna conjunct the sun in the sign of Leo. Mercury retrograde is in Virgo, but it's gonna move backwards and it's gonna move back into Leo uh, on August the 11th, I think. Um, August the 14th. August the 14th is gonna move back into Leo. August the 17th is gonna conjunct with the sun in Leo. And August the 4th, the day Mercury goes retrograde, August the 14th, when the retrograde, excuse me, August the 17th, Actually, it's August the 18th. See, this is what Mercury retrograde does to my videos. And those of you who have seen my videos know and watch other people know that the details just, just, you know, it's Mercury mayhem. Your brain is just all over the place. August the 4th, today, Mercury goes retrograde. August the 14th, Mercury retrogrades back into Leo from Virgo. August the 18th, the Sun and Mercury retrograde conjunct. And August the 19th, is the Aquarius full moon. Okay, so that's an arc. And then August the 28th, of course, is Mercury going direct in Leo. By September 11th, Mercury clears the shadow degrees, the degrees it, is, it will have gone over three times. I'm mentioning this arc for a reason when it comes to this week. So let me just build this up. The three dates that are most important with Mercury retrograde, August the 4th, August the 18th, August the 28th. And I am paying attention to what has come up today. Is it going to escalate in some ways? And, and what sort of revelatory quality uh, could conversations that are coming up around these dates have around things that have been in our blind spot? Or why is Mercury, what is Mercury trying to alert me to? And it's not just going to be related to Mercury going over uh, the shadow degrees three times. So it's not just 
Mercury retrograde doesn't just go over things related to entering, you know, the shadow degrees. Um, excuse me, I just did something to my computer. Arr! Did I say that I was trying to maintain a low profile? And then my computer just froze during Mercury retrograde. And is that why I am doing a video on Mercury retrograde? And Mercury literally is getting ready, ready to go retrograde just about now. Uh, or just in a few hours. What the hell? So anyway, I have no idea what I just did to my computer. Okay, focus. Abby. This is distressing. Okay, it's just frozen. Okay. So, 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 so. New Moon in Leo today, Mercury going retrograde, Venus going into Virgo. August the 19th, Aquarius full moon. This week, only one astrological event occurring, Venus entering into Virgo in a retrograde Mercury meet. Next week, however, the week after August the 11th, we have some pretty intense transits. Really what I want to say about this week to the best of your ability, if I were to, if I were to just, if I were to be flippant and shallow, I would say, try and take advantage of the relative peace that this week is going to offer. Because next week, the week as we head to the full moon in Aquarius on August the 19th is going to be challenging. That's me being shallow. Because next week, after August the 11th, on August the 14th, yes, Mercury retrogrades into Leo, but more importantly, Mars and Jupiter conjunct. And on the 15th, the next day, Mars squares Saturn. On the 19th, which is the day of the Aquarius full moon, Jupiter squares Saturn and Venus opposes Saturn. None of these are harmonious, flowy transits. Now, Mars conjuncting Jupiter is fine in Gemini. But from Gemini, once again, as we head to the full moon in Aquarius on August the 19th, next week, that's the week after August the 11th, we're going to have Mars and Jupiter meeting up in Gemini, squaring Saturn in Pisces, and Venus is also going to oppose Saturn. Venus in Virgo will oppose Saturn in Pisces, which of course means that Venus will be squaring Mars and Jupiter. And the real heavy in all of this, of course, is Saturn. And the key word for Saturn, as most of us know, when people might say discipline, people might say karmic consequences, I'll just say responsibility. So even though we have a new moon in Leo, and the transits through Leo are broadly supporting the forward movement in the direction that we would all like to go in related to the Aries part of the chart and the Taurus part of the chart and the houses occupied by Aries and Taurus in our chart where there is has been forward movement and momentum and excitement and adventure. The first two weeks of the month of Leo created by the Leo new moon, we may very much be dealing with the shadow of Saturn and Pisces demanding that things be stabilized in the Pisces part of our chart, where there has been, as I have said numerous times, a crisis brewing in the Pisces part of the chart since 2012, but peaking in 2016 and 17. August is a heavy month. August is a challenging month covered a lot of this in the monthly overview, etc. I've mentioned the videos that you may want to see for further context. What I'm trying to say, what I said being shallow is, yeah, we have only one aspect this week, but the week after that, things become intense. There's no way that we can say that moving towards that Aquarius full moon is, and I'm talking generically, I'm talking about I'm doing a general reading. I have no way of knowing what exactly... Oh, my computer just decided to work again. Except I can't see my cursor. Did I Did I say I was maintaining a low profile while I was doing Mercury retrograde? Once again, did I? Did I? Oh, okay. There's my cursor. No, it isn't. 
Oh, okay, now my computer is blinking. Oh, now it's not responding. Okay, let's get back to this. Is this why I continue to be an astrologer? Because the universe just continues to send me data to kind of smack me in my face all the time? Um, it's the biggest re reason why I continue to and I enjoy doing readings because it's where it's it's really where I it's really where I get to see whether I'm any good at all um and and continue to hone my hone my craft as they say there's no way of looking at that Aquarius full moon if the Aquarius full moon is making harmonious aspects to certain points in your chart bully for you good for you and it could and then of course it will those things have to be factored in but if we are just looking at uh the planetary positions in the heavens as they impact all of us then that aquarius full moon um and as we head to that aquarius full moon creates various points of friction in such a way that action is needed and because it's so close to a full moon that may cause a reaction. Uh, of course, there could be closure and completions and full moon related stuff. If I were to be deeper about this week and not shallow about this week, I would say that, yes, the good news is that we may not be hammered by any big or massive astrological event this week, generally speaking. But some of these aspects and conjunctions and squares that I am talking about that become exact on August 14th, 15th. As this week progresses, we are going to start to feel them. Because I like to look at aspects within about a five degree orb. And when we are talking about planets like Mars and Jupiter and Saturn, and when we are talking about Venus coming into, you know, I, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Those are the three that most factor into this coming week. They are going to be approaching the exact aspects, even as this week continues to progress. So while we only have one aspect this week, Venus conjuncting a retrograde Mercury on Wednesday, the 7th of August, it is a week that begins with Mercury going retrograde on a new moon. So we may still continue to deal with the fact that one of the things with Mercury retrograde and a new moon occurring on the same day is that it may feel to some extent over the past 48 hours and may have felt over the past 48 hours. So this is, I'm talking about August 1st, but especially intensifying into the second and the third and today the fourth. It can sometimes feel like logistical issues notwithstanding. Now I'm seeing a menu bar. Logistical issues notwithstanding. Logistical issues notwithstanding. I'm literally doing this video just as Mercury is at its most stationary. Logistical issues notwithstanding, certain critical developments that we are hoping for, thinking about, banking on, may in fact come to a bit of a standstill. And as I've said, number one, when the moon is dark before a new moon, our energy is low, flat, spacey, dreamy depressed, anxious, feeling hopeless, feeling like, um, is anything ever going to happen? Just experiment with this just before every new moon. On a positive side, before every new moon, sleep can be a great ally. And very often, taking naps, sleeping well, the moon is dark. Experiment with what it's like to sleep as you get closer to a full moon. Sleep is often disturbed for people. And it's not just, oh, there's light outside. It's not that much light, you know. But it, it, there is an energetic thing that occurs when it comes to, you know, it's, 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 it, before new moon, it's time to kind of 
respect that an old month is ending and a new month is beginning. Now, the new moon occurs, and I find very shortly, energy does come back, but the moon is still dark. So while we might be on the other side of the new moon, and there may be a greater motivation to get moving and getting things done, it may still be, I mean, we're, we aren't even 24 hours after a new moon, it may still be a rev up. The moon is still dark. Very often when it comes to new moons in certain traditions, people don't start to, people wait for the crescent to appear, even if it's the slightest sliver of a crescent, to really feel like they can write down the intentions that they want to write, which is a very sort of popular thing for people to do after a new moon. You know, where does the sign of Leo sit in your chart? And what do you want to intend for that house in your chart? Um, after a new moon. Some people do it right after a new moon. Some people like to be able to see the crescent uh, before they do it. And pe some people don't like to write down those intentions when the moon is completely dark. We are on the other side of the new moon, so the energy will pick up and increase. But there's something inconvenient about having a new moon and Mercury go retrograde on the same day. If you are feeling like you need to see results and action because it's a flat time. And I'm not talking forever. I'm talking about a couple of days before and a couple of days after the new moon. And after that, things start to pick up and pick up and pick up. And you won't be talking to me about a flat time by the time we get to next week after August the 11th. Number two. So, so already we come into this week from a place of emotional frustration, dissatisfaction, flatness. Luckily, because the moon is dark, it's unlikely to be tantrumy or overly jangly in terms of anxious anxiety. It's not a full moon, but it still has a kind of a depressed, hopeless quality. After the new moon, motivation comes in. As this week proceeds, I expect action, activity, results, to appear. If you are banking on results or certain things, you're going to have to be doing a bit of a tightrope walk as to how you how you move towards your goals, especially as you're dealing with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and things are revving up. Okay, that's number one. Number two, we are entering a week where Mercury has just gone retrograde. So as I said, I am paying attention to outside of logistical things that I'm dealing with, all of a sudden a software program that has a menu bar somewhere completely different and I still can't move my cursor. Outside of logistical things we're dealing with, I am paying attention to what is coming up around August the 4th. Who has reached out to me? Who is approaching? What is coming through in communication? Um, what could it be bringing up? Is it going to come up again? Something related to this as we head towards August 18th and 19th when Mercury retrograde and the Sun conjunctions, we head to the full moon. The full moon is opposite the new moon in Leo. So it is related to that new moon in Leo. And remember in your chart, things function together. It's a cumulative narrative. So even though the big news next week has to do with Venus, Saturn, Mars, and Jupiter squaring each other. When you deal with your life, you're also going to be dealing with the fact that you've got a new moon that has just occurred in Leo, Mercury retrograde in Virgo, going back into Leo, and at the time of the Aquarius full moon, the full moon opposing the Sun and Mercury in Leo, and squaring Uranus and Taurus, yet another square. So, on the one hand, astrologically, it is a relatively benign week, but I would say that, as I said, if I was being shallow, but it's really, I don't, I don't know, it's not going to be quite as demanding in its intensity as next week, but I think that it's going to be uneasy. We start off uneasy 
because there's not even if we have the energy to push certain things and we've had a relatively productive and i say that with a grain of salt 48 hours before the new moon and 48 hours after the new moon if you're waiting to see results related to whatever your productivity is it's going to be a little bit like watching paint dry or a pot of water come to a boil so you've got to be patient with that process let the moon crescent start to appear let a retrograde mercury let mercury start to gather some speed when mercury is going retrograde it is stationary in the sky more things happen when mercury starts to move backwards because it's gathering some speed when it's stationary the planet of communication transactions technology so much happens through mercurial means today we're no longer sitting at home waiting for the post person to drop some mail to us that is going to move our lives forward. Now life moves forward much more quickly and communications occur through various forms. And Mercury, the planet that greases the wheels on just about everything, has stopped and is in the process of reversing. So we come into this week uneasy because even if we have been productive, we may be not full moon anxious, but new moon anxious, a little bit flat, a little bit depressed, a little bit worried, coming into this new moon wanting to see some action and some energy. I think it will increase. But then as we head and also with Mercury retrograde, pay attention to, start to pay attention to what is coming up, what is the universe trying to bring to your attention. August is very much about endings. Because remember, after September, and after the September 2nd Virgo new moon, by which time Mercury will be not moving forward very fast, but at least be moving forward, we enter this kind of birth canal of transformation that takes us from September of this year to the end of the first week of June of next year. So certain things energetically have to be dealt with and shed in August. What is a retrograde Mercury outside the logistical mayhem that you're going to have to contend with? What is Mercury trying to bring to your attention that has been in your blind spot that you may have made up some stories about, some assumptions about? When the planets are moving forward, we often think we can do everything. We often think that we should gallop around chasing every opportunity. And Mercury retrograde can sometimes be great in saying, what were you thinking? What are you thinking? Here is what the reality of this actually is. Remember that my New Moon and Leo video, which is the video I did just before this, I titled it Reality Check. So we're heading into that energy, the first week of that energy. And reality checks can sometimes be, they are invariably helpful, but they can sometimes be sobering still the first week of the month. The other thing, as I said, next week, the week of the 11th, we have some intense aspects building. The full moon squares Uranus and opposes the sun in a retrograde Mercury. By the time we get to that August 19th full moon, we will be aware of what Mercury is trying to tell us. But not only do we have that square that one could argue is motivating, because it's squaring Uranus and Taurus. So some action needs to be taken so that we can move forward in a way that is particular or individual to us in the Taurus part of the chart. Saturn, by the time we get to that full moon, is just like not so fast. Don't even think about forgetting about me. Whatever blessings Venus is bringing in Virgo need to serve me, Saturn, and whatever Jupiter you thought you were doing in terms of creating endings and new beginnings, auspicious new beginnings in the Gemini part of the chart, and Mars, was drumming up to kind of make that happen, needs to serve me or take me into account. And we're going to start to feel the Mars-Jupiter conjunction squaring Saturn energy build as this week progresses.
Mars conjuncting Jupiter in Gemini. Jupiter is wherever Jupiter goes, trying to align you with the right path, the right people for you in the Gemini part of your chart, the house occupied by the sign of Gemini in your chart. Mars is a planet of action and defense, pursuing goals and boundaries. And in that overt masculine yang, red planet, testosterone filled energy, the pursuit of what we desire and the protection of what we value conflict can sometimes enter the situation. But also with Mars conjunct Jupiter, the energy to make things happen in the Gemini part of the chart, to help Jupiter create these endings and new beginnings in the Gemini part of our chart. But it can also mean the presence and awareness of certain obstacles. So that in itself is a dynamic conjunction. What awareness of who or what do we want to go after? What do we want to protect? What we're doing to go after what we want to go after, what we're doing to protect? Where are the threats? You know, as Jupiter, a conversation between Jupiter trying to create alignment and Mars on a very mundane, physical, 3D level, trying to create results, protect us, protect what we value, and to go after what it is that we want. Fine. But then that conjunction, oh, my computer is just pasting things on its own. I'm not kidding you. You, you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm not. I don't know what this is. I'm not... Seriously, you know, hmm, this is such a funny video to do right now. Uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, um, because it's just, no, it's fine. Let's focus. Let's focus. Let's focus. In the middle of all this, the uneasiness created by entering a week with a new moon and Mercury conjunct, Mercury retrograde on the same day. And as we proceed in the week, starting to feel that Mars-Jupiter conjunction and the square with Saturn and Pisces start to develop. As we head towards Wednesday, and I think we are already feeling this again, because the we're three days away from Venus and a Mercury retrograde conjunction. Venus and Mercury retrograde are already within four degrees of each other. The Venus, a conjunction for me, is a very much a conversation between, in this case, Venus, the planet of what we value, and therefore finances and relationships, our abundance, our resources, our values, what we value. Venus, wherever she goes, brings blessings, opportunities. On a more mundane level, not quite as dramatic as ending things and beginning things like Jupiter, but the opportunities that often count. Someone sends a favorable email. Someone says, yes, I'd like to meet. Someone says, we'd like to set up an interview. Someone says, oh, yes, I'm interested. That is all very Venusian blessing activity, ease, opportunities, um, financial opportunities, um, creative opportunities. Venusian, anything to do with the luxury, beautification, I would just be a little careful while Mercury is retrograde. So Venus moves up with the planet of communication. The planet of communication, who by Wednesday will start moving, but is moving slowly. 
and has something on his mind. Has an agenda. Y'all have been moving really fast. I'm glad you've had a productive May, June, July, although it was complicated at times, but I need to reverse because I need to point out a few things to you. That's on its mind and it's done the reversing, but it's just sort of starting to look behind and gingerly starting to inch back. What conversation do you think that a retrograde Mercury would be having? With your money and your relationships. Those are the two tangible things that I see with Venus. Yes, Venus brings opportunities. What is it that you need to revise or relook at when it comes to your resources? How are you managing them? where they are coming from. Is that part of the anxiety that has been created over the past 48 to 72 hours? Is it part of the flatness that you might have been experiencing? Venus is entering Virgo. Mercury rules Virgo and Mercury is retrograde. Where is Virgo in your birth chart? What house does it occupy? Issues related to that house may be topsy-turvy, may even currently be experiencing a slowdown as Mercury goes retrograde. And when Mercury is retrograde, things are not going to flow as quickly or as efficiently in the Virgo part of our chart and in the Gemini part of the chart where Mars and Jupiter are conjuncting as they normally would if Mercury was direct and moving fast. Now, if you have Mercury retrograde in your birth chart, Things may feel different. You may feel a lot more decisive, a lot clearer. You may come into this week with a sense of gung-ho. Let's get going. I feel clear about this. I feel clear about that. I'm ready to execute on this. I'm ready to execute on that. Great. You experiment with what Mercury retrograde times bring for you. And if you're feeling like your energies are in sync, then, you know, respect that. This is a general reading. So much depends on where Virgo and Gemini sit in your chart and what houses they occupy in your chart. And just exactly where this Venus-Mercury retrograde conjunction is happening in your chart, which house it's happening in. It can bring an opportunity for healing for some people, particularly if you're dealing with some sort of a past issue. It can bring up past issues that need to be revisited, as I said, related to relationships and finances. Most of all, I think it is a rethinking. Most of all, it is a pause button. Most of all, I think it is a slightly hanged man energy, if we look at a tarot card, around our resources. It could be a bit of a wake-up call when it comes to relationships and resources and an awareness that in August and September, we may need to be a little bit careful and mindful about how we are managing our resources so our resource can serve us and what we value and what we are trying to manifest. Or we may feel instinctively that we need to be careful with our resources because by the time we get to that full moon in Aquarius, Venus in Virgo will be opposing Saturn in Pisces. So whatever blessings Venus is going to try and bring in Virgo will kind of get answered for because Saturn in Pisces may say, hand over those resources to me because I need to help stabilize this Pisces part of the chart. I mean, the new moon in Virgo in September opposes Saturn in Pisces. And the full moon eclipse on September the 17th is conjunct Neptune, the planet that has been causing a certain amount of mayhem in Pisces. I 
I thought this was going to be a short video. So on the surface, we have Venus and Mercury retrograde meeting up on Wednesday, on August the 7th. I think we've already been feeling this energy. I think that there is, I don't want to use words like reconsidering and reevaluating. I think reevaluating is actually a better word. I think in keeping with this theme of, re of a reality of August being a month of a reality check, I think we might be clear that over the past 48 to 72 hours and through Wednesday, we might be in a place where we are clear that we need to revisit, reevaluate, rethink, really be mindful and careful, bring into alignment what is going on with our resources and our relationships with regard to where it is that we want to and need to go. The first planet that a retrograde Mercury aspects as it goes retrograde is Venus. What could he possibly have to say to her? And I think what he's saying to her is there are certain things I need to bring to everybody's attention. And oh, by the way, things are not flowing as freely or as fast. And we can't just kind of brush the things that we are uncomfortable with or about under the cobweb anymore, under, under, you know, under the carpet anymore. Conjunctions are often energizing aspects. So this idea of a reality check, this idea of a pondering, thinking about, assessing, paying attention to relationships, finances, resources, what we value, are they serving what we value? What is an energy drain? What needs to end? What is energy that is going to belong in the past? What is energy that is about the future? What actions do we take? What is the connection between these actions and what we own or possess or how are we trying to generate our income or what relationships stay, don't stay? We may not see a lot of flow while Mercury is stationary. And we may not have seen it over the past 72 hours or so, or the next 48 hours or so. But the absence of that flow and Mercury going retrograde is really making us sit up. And think and consider Where are we? Where are we? And where have we been out of alignment when it comes to managing our resources and our relationships? And what needs to be done in order to get to a place where we are generating resources and those resources support what we value and they're not a drain? I'm practically willing to put money on the fact that over the past 48 to 72 hours, and I say over the past 48 to 72 hours again, because Venus and a retrograde Mercury will conjunct on August the 7th, but it's never, it's rarely, rarely, rarely the day of an aspect. It's what is happening as that aspect is approaching. I would say we've started to feel the impact of this August 1st, August 2nd onwards. And I think that we will be richer for it. Because it may be a reality check related to our resources, our relationships, what we value that is needed 
based on the fact that in May, June, and July, we may have been moving forward. But very often with Mercury retrograde, he has a tendency to say, you knew you were glossing over something. You knew you were ignoring something. You knew you were not paying enough attention to this. And I'm just going to bring attention to it now. I'm reversing for a reason because there are things you kind of know out in the ether and your intuition is picking up on, but they have not made it into your project plan, your to-do list, your reality. You're dealing with data and facts because it has not become real for you on a mental level. And a Mercury retrograde and a Venus conjunction, Mercury retrograde is bringing certain things onto a mental, cognitive level when it comes to resources and relationships. Now, the conjunction is going to occur on the 7th, and Venus is going to keep moving forward, and Mercury retrograde is going to keep happening. Mercury retrograde is going to go back into Leo, and from there, he's going to conjunct the Sun. And from there, he's going to, you know, and I think on the way to conjuncting the sun, he's going to square Uranus, and then he's going to try and Chiron eventually. You know, those are the those are the aspects that he's going to be making three times as part of this retrograde. So the conjunction with Venus it doesn't have to be earth shattering, but it's important enough, and it's especially important as I'm recording this video because I'm recording it on August the 4th, the day of the new moon, the day of Mercury going retrograde, the day Venus enters into Virgo and gets even closer to a retrograde Mercury. So it's especially relevant to the energy we're gonna be feeling in the first part of this week. What is going on with my relationships and my finances? What do I need to become present to? What needs to get translated on a mental level? What needs to become real? With Mercury retrograde, often it's said that you need to go back to the drawing board. And I think that's fair, but it's not a going back to the drawing. It's a going back to the drawing board as a result of what Mercury retrograde makes real to us. And when something is, when the personal planets and Mercury are going direct, we can be making a lot of progress in certain directions, but some element of that progress has a strong sense of fantasy in it. We're just kind of gaga. We're moving forward. As I said, we avail of opportunities. We might be interviewing places and we might think that things are going, and we may get second rounds, third rounds, and be, but we're also making assumptions about how this is going to be and that's going to be and how everybody loves us or everybody does not. And then all of a sudden, Mercury's just like, three months have passed and it is time for me to go retrograde. And it is time that those things that you have not brought onto a cognitive level, let me just let me just make real for you what is actually going on here. Who is actually on your side, who is not on your side. Where you are investing a lot of energy and assuming certain things and what is right about those assumptions and what is wrong about those assumptions so that you can think and rethink and redecide, do I wanna invest all my eggs in this basket or have I gotten what I can out of the situation and do I need to look somewhere else? might feel in certain cases catastrophic for some people but it doesn't have to be ultimately this will move forward and more opportunities will come along and it'll be fine for most of us unless someone is really dealing with something dire so as we look at this uneasy but dynamic week because I think after the new moon, we are going to be more energized to try and solve problems and sort them out and avail of opportunities. And I think we are carrying an instinctive awareness that by the time we're in September, we're going to be moving forward. We may even be looking forward to August to sort a few things out for us and what needs to be ended so we can move forward lighter in September. Let Mercury retrograde give us the reality check so that we know what is real and what is not real. And so as the new moon 
starts to gain more light and starts to expand, our energy will increase, our motivation will increase, and some of the flatness, the uneasiness, the anxiety can start to be translated more easily into action and action plans to achieve things, to manage crises, to move past flatness. And the flatness right now I'm talking about on August the 4th, created by a dark moon and Mercury stationary. So we expect activity to increase, but we go into this activity from a place of, oh my God, I need this to increase. I need things to start happening. In addition, as this week progresses, we start to feel, oh, Mars and Jupiter coming conjunct and squaring Saturn. What is going on in the Pisces part of your chart that is going to need attention? Very important as you head towards that full moon in Aquarius on August the 19th. And you're going to start to feel both the Mars-Jupiter conjunction and the square Saturn. And these could be external things. It could be an opportunity that is brewing that could give you a sense of what is ending or beginning in the Gemini part of your chart. But there may be an awareness of what could block that opportunity or, yeah, related to the crisis in the Pisces part of the chart since 2012 that peaked in 2016-17 as that is, and that is seeking stabilization. That awareness may increase this week. And in the first half of this week, and I dare say we've been feeling this since August 1st, 2nd, we may be getting a bit of a reality check and a bit of shakeup related to our resources and our relationships with Venus and Mercury retrograde getting ready to meet up in Virgo. This is what dynamic months look like. And the tarot card for August is the chariot. So as much as it's a Mercury retrograde month, it still means that we do what we can to keep the chariot on the road and move in the direction that we feel we need to. And that means availing of opportunity. That means moving away from things and moving towards something. And all these evaluations of what is real about my resources, what is real about my relationships, what do I need to get real about, what do I now understand on a very factual level that before were things I was glossing over. These are all gifts some people may become aware of where it is that they're trying to go and how they need to manage their relationships and their resources in order to effectively get to that place. Where's your money going? Where is your relationship energy going? You can still continue to be in relationship with people, but you may decide that in certain cases you are going to uh, enroll people in what you're trying to do. But in certain cases, you may decide that you're also going to share less because you're not entirely clear about the motivation and the intentions of other people. Mercury retrogrades from an overall perspective can help us become more strategic. Because while Mercury retrograde rightfully has the logistical reputation of creating mayhem and confusion, on a non-logistical, totally real, your life level, it can be enormously clarifying.
It can make you see things that you've been avoiding seeing. And now that you've seen it, you're going to have to factor it in to how you're going to move forward. And yeah, over the past few days, next two or three days, the first of these planets, the first, the first, the first conversation Venus may bring to the table. This is what is important. This is where we're going. This is what is of value. This is what I want. This is what I want to protect. This is what I want to nurture. This is what I want to grow. And a retrograde Mercury, we may say, if that is the case, then here's what I need to reveal to you about your resources and relationships. So act accordingly, plan accordingly, take action accordingly. Move your chariot accordingly. But energetically, we come into this week uneasy, and the uneasiness just continues to build. But there's a lot to be said for. <sighs> there can be a lot to be said for discontent. There can be a lot to be said for problems, you know, because they, they really, they really help. If they're harnessed properly, they can really help be catalysts to move us towards what we really want. Change is here, whether we like it or not. I will leave it at that. That is your weekly overview. Do not be disheartened. Try not to get too frustrated with Mercury retrogrades, logistical shenanigans. Just be really awake and grateful and prepared for what it is that Mercury retrograde is trying to tell us. And certain things may just be slower this month than we would like them to be. So try and figure out how you're going to manage through those things, particularly related to the houses ruled by Mercury in your birth chart. Where does Virgo sit? Where does Gemini sit in your birth chart? Just be prepared for things there to be slower, a little bit more topsy-turvy. Prepare as this week continues to expect to see things develop, but... You're going to have to manage this month like, oh, I haven't received this communication. I haven't received this in the mail. I haven't received this email. Oh, now it's, come, you know, it, it, it's just mm. as we as we headed to August the 4th and for the next 48 hours or so, it may feel like everything is kind of ground to a halt. Moon is dark, Mercury is stationary, and we can start to feel the machine start to creak again into action. And as this week progresses, we will start to see it move. But anybody who's really relying it or wanting it to move, just manage accordingly. Manage your frustration accordingly. You can do the best that you can. can. As I said, some of, some, of, some of us may well have been relatively productive trying to stay in action to try and mitigate this kind of feeling of things coming to a standstill. But at a certain point when Mercury is stationary, either going retrograde or direct, or when it is combust and conjunct the sun, you just have to surrender and let it gather some speed again. Even Mercury retrograde that is moving relatively faster at certain points in its retrograde is to be preferred to a stationary Mercury with regard to things manifesting and happening. The only problem is Mercury is typically retrograde for about three weeks. So you've got it stationary, you've got it conjunct the sun where it loses some power, because it's having a conversation with the brightest thing out, it's combust, and then when it's going direct. So, you know, it's going to have its ups and downs. It's going to have its ups and downs. You're going to feel ups and downs every two or three days. Oh, we're moving again. Oh, we stopped again. Oh, we're moving again. Oh, we kind of stopped again. But overall, what is Mercury trying to tell you? What is in? What is out? What doors are open? What doors are closed? What do you know? What do you understand here? 
not just at a, I wonder, I think, is that what's going on? What's not going on? Not at an, not intuitive blips. Reality. So much for a short weekly overview. I hope that it helps you and I hope that it grounds you. And I hope that it prepares you and gives you the resolve that is going to build after a new moon. We're at least going to now, at least we're not on Friday, Saturday, where we may have just been like, I'm doing things, but nothing's happening. And I just don't. At least there's greater resolve once the new moon has occurred. Now over 12 hours ago and by tomorrow and day after and the day after. I'm very much reminded of sort of Scarlett O'Hara saying, after all, tomorrow is another day. And after a new moon, every tomorrow till we get to the full moon and even the week after the full moon has more and more resolve and promise. And that is something to hold on to. And that is something to utilize. All right. If you would like me to do a reading for you or look at your birth chart or make an easy to read birth chart for you, my email address is in the description box below. You can email me there and I will send you information about rates and offerings. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. Next to the subscribe button, there's a bell icon. If you hover over that, there's a wiggly bell on top. If you click on that, you'll be notified when I do new videos. There's a thanks button under this video. If you want to contribute to the channel, you can use that. Comment, like the video. It gives it more circulation on YouTube. I thought not posting videos on Facebook and Twitter anymore, which I stopped at the end of July, would affect my viewership. I was nervous that it would affect it a lot more. I'm grateful that it hasn't had quite the impact. I can tell it's had a bit of an impact. So by all means, if you want to share, if you find this content useful or helpful, um, those of you who are new and are seeing this video for the first time, I, I, I urge you, if any of this resonates, to kind of take a look at especially more recent past videos to see if there's content there that will give you greater context as well. Outside of that, August is such a weird month. It's time to get moving in the direction we want to, but some part of that movement during August is knowing what needs to be ended and knowing that overall there's a kind of pause on really being able to move towards what we want because we want Mercury to be able to tell us what is real and what is not real. It's just, it's a funny mix. It's a funny mix. It's actually, it's actually, if you get it, and I know that I do, I just don't know if I'm articulating it as well or not. This card is very um, it, 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 kind of spot on. You know, some people interpret the two sphinxes that the charioteer is trying to drive as somehow, and of course they're just sitting there. What does it take to keep a chariot with multiple beasties that are harnessed to it and are supposed to move it forward on the road? For some people, the chariot is a, is a card of victory and forward movement and procession and all that kind of stuff. For some people, I think it's much more a card of what does it take to keep things on the road and be moving forward and what do you need to be cognizant of and what you're leaving behind and which direction are you going in. Don't ignore what a retrograde Mercury and a Venus are already talking about. Don't ignore reality checks about finances and relationships as they may have occurred over the past 48 to 72 hours and continue to occur through Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Take them seriously. Allow yourself to get the reality checks. It's not a one-sided conversation because it also involves Venus talking about what you value, where you want to go, and how things need to be brought into alignment relationship-wise and financially in order to get you there. And conversations of how to manage resources and how to manage relationships, 
Who can you trust? Who do you share with? Who do you not? Who do you enroll? Who do you confide in? Who do you not? How many resources do you need? Do you have them? What do you need to generate them? What do you need to do to manage expenses? What expenses contribute to helping you get to where it is that you want to go? And what are a drain? Don't ignore those reality checks. All right, folks. Um, I do want to talk about the planets moving through the sign of Virgo because we actually have Venus that's actually starting that process in earnest. I know Mercury came in a few days ago, but it's now retrograde. But the fact that planets in Virgo are going to be opposing Saturn and Neptune and squaring Mars and Jupiter to some extent, but also trining Uranus uh, in Taurus, we, we kind of just need to, we just need to isolate these transits through the sign of Virgo and talk about them. So that, that needs to happen at some point. I need to talk about the fact that when a retrograde Mercury conjuncts the sun, an old Mercury cycle, a communication cycle related to the sign of Aries ends and a new one related to the sign of Leo begins. So there's going to be a certain amount of content that as this week goes along, will roll out. I don't want to wait for all of that next week because as we get to the full moon, etc., we're going to have enough to talk about with the with the intensity of the transits that are building and becoming exact next week. Thank you very much. It is getting darker and darker, and soon I will disappear. <laughs>